great things in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is Apostle Spiro Wisdom Kabinde all the way from South Africa and Pretoria. Today, it is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. We are inviting the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus to be with us as we are starting this service. We are all welcomed, all those that are watching us in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We bless your holy name in the name of Jesus. Today we find our scripture reading from the book of Acts chapter 9 verse 36 to 42 here yeah, we are going to read about a disciple of God who died and God resurrected her from who resurrected her from the spirit of death there are many people who are dead today they need resurrection but uh, we need to bring a strong argument before the Holy God before God so that he can hear our prayers in the book of Acts, just open the book of Acts for me. Chapter 9, verse 36 to 42. We are reading about Tabitha. We are reading about Dokas, who was a disciple of God, who loved God, who gave everything for God, who died, but people felt that the death was premature. We may die, but our works can also deliver us. The grace of God can deliver us. Our role in the communities can also deliver us from the spirit of death in the name of Jesus. Can you read for us? You are all welcomed in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much for watching. And I'm speaking healing upon your life. I'm speaking, you know, a breakthrough around every challenge that you are facing. And I know that God is with you in every circumstance. There is something that I like before we start written the word is that there is no testimony without a test in life we need to go through some rough patches it is a must for God to prove his existence for God to prove our faith therefore it is imperative that we need to hold on to this faith of God we need to hold on irrespective of what we are going through, we need to hold on. We need to hold on. David says in the book of Psalms 23, though I walk through, we are in the journey. In this journey, we are going through some challenges, but we don't lose hope. We are going through the challenges of sicknesses and diseases, we are going through the challenges of death. We are going through the challenges of sabotage in the ministry at work. We are going through, you know, betrayal in relationships. We are going through a number of challenges. But we are not going to lose hope in the name of Jesus. We are going through bewitchment. <laughs> People are using their own stuff. But as long as God has anointed you, God has called you. As he has called you, has chosen you. Therefore, nothing you must fear. Instead, the fear must fear you. Because you need to stand firm 
in his promises what it is written on his word it will come to pass we need not to mind time thousand years can become a minute a minute can become you know thousand years so god is working mysteriously so in the name of jesus here we are going to see the power of resurrection can you please read for us acts chapter 9 verse 36 to 42. Amen. Yes. At Joppa, there was a certain disciple named Tabitha, which is translated to Dorcas. This woman was full of good works and charitable deeds, which she did. But it happened in those days that she became sick and died. When they had washed her, they laid her in, the, in an upper room. Yes. And since the ladder was near Joppa, and the disciples had hear that Peter was there, they sent two men to him, imploring him to not to delay in coming to them. Yes. Then Peter arose and went with them. Yes. When he had come, they brought him to the upper room and all the widows stood by him oh, weeping Jesus, yes. showing the tiny the tunics and the garments which Dorcas had made while she was with them but peter put them all out and knelt down and prayed and turning to the body he said Tabitha, arise. Tabitha, get up. Yes. And she opened her eyes, and when she was, and she saw Peter, she, she, she sat up. Then he gave her his hand and lifted her up. And when he had called the saint and the widows, he presented her alive. Forty-two. And it became known throughout all Joppa, and many believed on the Lord. Amen. Father, we thank you for the reading of your word. Father, we are coming before your holy throne. We decree, Father God, and we declare that the power of resurrection that is in our lives it is in our lives. This power of resurrection is right inside of us. It's resurrecting everything within our bodies, within our families, within our ministries. Father, we thank you for the power that you resurrected Christ from the dead. That is why Paul, in the book of Philippians chapter 3, verse 10, his only mission it was to find and to know the power of his resurrection and to know the power that resurrected Christ from the dead. We know, Father God, that you have resurrected our situations. You resurrected my life from death. You resurrected me from death. You turned around the tables. Father, do so even to others in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. That my Father, today, as you resurrect our situation, we come before your holy throne and we will not stop giving thanks unto you because of your wonders, because of the power that we have imparted, because of the impartation to the men and women of God. Today, Father God, when we are perplexed, we rush to men and women of God, holy men of God, holy women of God, that will ensure that things that are being stolen are being resurrected. And in the name of Jesus, we thank you. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. The Bible tells us that we are reading about Tabitha, who is also called Dockers. Everyone in the city of Joppa loved Tabitha. When we talk of Joppa, we know, we remember of uh, the story of Jonah, who was told by God to say, Jonah, Arise, go to Nineveh, go and preach to people. Jonah arose and went down to Tashish 
But when he arrived in Joppa, where he got, where he paid the fare and went into the ship, the ship that was going to Tashish. So Joppa was that place where Peter was used to into that place. And he used to stay sometimes there in Joppa because the Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 10 verse 5 to 8 now the Bible says now send some men of to, send, send some men to Joppa for a man named Simeon Peter he is staying with Simon the leather maker who lives in a house near the sea after saying this the angel left Cornelius called into his two servants and one of his soldiers who worshipped God. He explained everything to them and sent them off to Joppa. It tells us that Peter used to stay in Joppa sometimes, into Simon, the one who was making the leather, the leathers in the name of Jesus. So it is a possibility that in Joppa there were Christians in Joppa. There was a Christian church at Joppa. That's what you must understand. And it's and it is possible that believers met for worship in the home of Dockers, which is in those days was the custom to look upon. You know, then churches were very good because they were held in houses. It was not the auditoriums and and and, and uh, even when you read the book of Acts. Uh, we know that uh, when Peter was arrested there was a house of Rhoda where the church was gathering to pray for Peter therefore in other words just in a nutshell the story of Dorcas is a very touching story in the name of Jesus Everyone in the city loved Tabitha because of the wonders that she was doing. She was always doing good things. She was helping the poor. She was making garments for others. Actually, she was a fashion designer. And that's me, eh? Yeah, she was a fashion designer. And she was this type of an offering of giving to the widows. She will do the clothes for the widows. She will give to the community. You know, she will take care of the community. She was having a very big, you know, shop where she was tailoring things. She never sold to people. There was a, a portion of that which she gave. She gave free of charge. This is what we call alms. Alms is a type of giving to the community in the name of Jesus. Therefore, if you are doing alms, if you are giving alms, you are not exempted from paying tithes. You still pay tithes, still, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you so much. Uh, you are all welcomed in the name of Jesus. This Tabitha, I see my colleague, Mama Asemula, thank you so much in the name of Jesus. I see Peter all the way from Zambia or Zimbabwe. Thank you so much. I see Nani Kabin, this is one. Thank you so much. Right, the Bible tells us that one day Tabitha, who was named Dorcas in Greek, he, she grew sick and died. Women washed her body. When they washed her body, they placed it in an upper room. This upper room, it was where they fellowship. She was having, you know, this fashion design shop in the upper room. It is where they used to come together for fellowship, for prayers and everything of that nature. Then after they washed her body, they placed this in an upper room, in an upper stairs. They sent for the Apostle Peter who was in nearby, in Lydda. Because they had, according to Acts chapter 10, verse 5 to 8, that this guy used to go to Joppa to be around. And uh, they said, no, send us, send us Peter to come in the name of Jesus. When Peter came, they got hold of Peter. Thank you so much. You are all welcome in the name of Jesus. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. How are you, prophet of God? 
Thank you so much. In the name of Jesus. Then when Peter came, where Lydia was, where Tabitha was, the Bible says, when she entered, she dismissed everyone. She cleared to say, I don't want anyone new here. As I enter into this upper room, I want to dismiss all of you. I am chasing out. Everyone must be out of the room. And Peter fell. And Peter fell. And Peter fell on his knees and prayed. He said, Tabitha, get up. The other version will say, Tabitha, rise up. This is the prophet of God. Who, is, who, who has this power of God? The power of resurrection. The power of restoration. The power of doing great wonders and signs in the name of Jesus. She set up what else she was told. Tabitha, get up. When Tabitha got up. You know, this power can speak to the dead people. Can speak to the dead things. And dead things can hear the voice of a prophet. Lazarus, same story. He was dead. But Jesus said, Lazarus, come out. Me and you, we are alive. We could hardly hear the voice of God. Therefore, it is my prayer that we hear the voice of God. It is my prayer that we hear the voice of the prophet. It is my prayer that we hear his voice as he is speaking unto us in the name of Jesus. If that, if that Tabitha was able to hear the voice of God, if Tabitha, the dead person, was able to hear the voice of God, what about me and you? We may be dead emotionally. We may be dead spiritually. We may be dead physically. We may be dead mentally. But God today is speaking into our lives. He is saying, let us rise up. Let us arise. Let us stand up. For thy light has come. Thy glory has risen upon us. We need to rise up. We need to rise up from our slumber. We need to rise up from our death situations. We need to rise up from every death situation in the name of Jesus. It doesn't matter what you are going through. Tabitha got sick and died. What are you facing today? What is your challenge today? We are facing, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, a sabotage in the ministry. We are facing bewitchment. <laughs> eh? Every church member in their household, there are holes that adapt. And they are experiencing bad pains. They are bad written. Then the question will ask, who has bewitched you? But we are calling upon the prophet of God. We are calling upon Jesus who will come and speak life into our lives in the name of Jesus. When he came, he said, out. Just pack your load. Just get out. I want to be with God. Why Peter took them out? He wanted to be alone with God. It was Peter. It was Tabitha, the dead one, as well as God. Therefore, the Trinity means, you know, holiness. And it means, you know, that, you know, it is Trinity in the name of Jesus. Then he had to pray in the name of Jesus. And when she arose from dead, everyone started to celebrate. News spread like a wildfire all over their head that, hey, Tabitha has been resurrected from the dead because people were crying for Tabitha and then many people now started to believe in Jesus you know people will cry for you just imagine that you are dead what is it that will make people to cry for you what is what impact are you doing in your community what impact are you doing in your work what impact are you doing in every area where you find yourself are you bringing a change are you bringing a transformation what is it that you are doing? Do you know that there are people who are celebrating when you are dead? They say, oh, it is a good riddance. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? It is what? 
it is a good reason because you were contributing nothing at the end of the day. But there are people who are playing a very crucial role in our lives. We value people, we love them, not only for their existence, also for their works that they are doing into our lives. We know that Jesus came on this world. We had to cry for his death. Why he died? Because he was doing wonders, signs and miracles. He was doing the deliverance. He was healing the sick. He was restoring the eyes of the blind. The lame could walk. But his death, it was just a once-off redemption for everyone in this world. That is why we continue to celebrate his death, his resurrection, even his ascension in the name of Jesus. Therefore, Dorcas was full of good works. This story forms a subject of this study as it is inspiring thousands and thousands of people in the name of Jesus. 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 Name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, you look number one, what I want you to perceive or what I want you to note, it is her name. Notice the significance of of her name. In verse 36, the Bible tells us that her name is Aramic. Dorcas means Tabitha. Tabitha means antelope or a gazelle. A very graceful animal. Hello? Hello? Your name means something. What is your name? What does your name mean? My name is Wisdom. Huh? What does your name mean? What does your name mean? If your name is not meaning something that is fruitful, please change your name. Nothing stops you from changing your name. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Because your name may mean something which is destructive. Your name may mean something that is not taking you to the decision that you have made. If you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. That is why God was able to change people's names. In the book of Matthew, chapter 16, verse 16 to 19, when Peter said, you are Christ, the son of the living God, it was, you know, he was Simon Pajona, means a reed. But he had to change his name to, uh, to Peter. Peter means a rock. And he made a declaration to say, upon this rock, I shall build my church. Not upon Simon by Jonah, I shall build my church. No, because the name before meant, meant something. Then he had to change the name. There are a number of people's names that needs to be changed. Your name means your destiny. Your surname means your past. Some people focus on their surnames. All to find that a surname is just a dropper. But when you focus on your name, you are focusing on your future. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? That is why Jabez in the book of First Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9 to 10, the Bible says, and Jabez meant, the name Jabez, Jabez meant sorrow. But Jabez had to fight that name by praying unto God to say, Father, you must bless me indeed. I can walk, I cannot walk in line with the name that represents sorrow. Yes, I was born under a sorrow but I am not a sorrow and I am not walking you know towards sorrow but just change bless me so that this blessing can oppose the meaning of my name do you remember in the bible in the book of Genesis chapter 35 when he was coming from Laban as he was coming from Sechem Jacob and his wives Rachel was full of pains, was heavily pregnant. She gave birth to a son. And the lady, Rachel, named the son. He said, the name is Benoni. Benoni means sorrow. Benoni. Jabez, same meaning. They were given birth out of sorrow. But Jacob said, no, this is not Benoni, but it is Benjamin. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? 
Therefore, names must be changed. Even Abraham's name was changed from Abraham to Abraham. My name was changed from spirit to wisdom in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much in Jesus' name. The name was changed from you must also change your name so that you can speak your destiny in the name of Jesus. Therefore, the significance of your name, your name must carry a meaning. Your name must carry, you know, a solution to people's lives. Start to look for a name. Start to look for a name that will speak, you know, power. That will speak resurrection in the name of Jesus. You know, I named my dog Power. The name of my dog is Power. She survived two deaths now. Hello? Amen. Easter Monday, she was very sick. I had to do. She had to lie in the, in the house. And she was thinking to, to a point of death. Do you understand? I had to pray for her resurrection. And she was restored. Now the dog is alive and kicking. Now I changed this name power now to who resurrection in my life. Do you understand me? Who restoration in my life? Because I've got a testimony to tell around this dog in the name of Jesus. But here I am in this issue of names. You look at the significance of her name. As I said, a gazelle is a graceful animal and her name stands in the Bible as a symbol of greatness in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Therefore your name means something. Look at your name. Your name can take you into your destiny. If your name cannot take you into your destiny, please review your name. Ask God to give you another name that will speak your destiny in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So now, Dorcas means full of grace. Dorcas means full of truth. Means what? Full of grace, full of truth. Number two, what you can notice about Dorcas is that she was a disciple. She was what? A disciple. You must be a disciple of God. A disciple of God is not only a person that can share good news. A disciple of God can also be a person who is doing good things for others. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? What is it that you are doing? When you look at verse 36, okay, she was a disciple. A disciple is more of your Christian, is more of your believer. During those times in the first century church, they used to call themselves disciples. Hallelujah. A disciple is a follower of Jesus Christ. Are you a follower of Jesus Christ? Or are you a follower of miracles? If you are a follower of Jesus Christ, you will go through some rough patches in life. You will go through some attacks. You will go through some sickness and diseases. You will go through some, you know, number of challenges in your life. That is why David, in the book of Psalms 23, says, Though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Therefore, if you are a follower of Christ, you will experience number of challenges in life. I also experience, I have my own experiences. It doesn't matter how long these challenges are facing you, but the fact of the matter, you shall end in praise. You shall end in worshiping God. You shall end praising and thanking God for what he for what he has done for you. He is with you through thick and thin. We are going through rough times. We are going through, you know, based, uh, situations that 
can even invite death into your life. There are people who are getting sick. There are people who are who are who, who, who are going through some rough patches even in their marriages at work in every situation in every area where they find themselves. But as a disciple of God, you must note that He is Jehovah Shama. He is forever with you. He is not going to leave you nor forsake you because He is God, the Almighty God, El Shaddai in the name of Jesus. Therefore, you need to be a disciple of Jesus. You need to be a follower of Jesus. Just do away with the miracles, signs and wonders. Those things, those things will follow you. Those things will locate you. Those things will look for you wherever you are. People today, they are not disciples, but they are miracle signs and wonder. You know, researchers, they are looking for that. They are moving up and down. They are looking for for immediate healing, everything that they want, it must be an instant thing. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Amen. You may go through some rough patches. It may not take a second. It may not take a day. It may not take days. No, but it may take years. But at the end of the day, a change will take place. So people are up in their arms. They are so they are pushing God. They are twisting God for their miracles. That is why now, you know, impatience is open, is a door that is opened for you to be a victim of false prophets. You can count how many people have been deceived by these false prophets. Some lost their jobs, some lost everything, their property, they lost their marriages, they lost their businesses, even their lives because of being impatient. The Bible says in the book of Luke, uh, Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 But seek ye the kingdom of God But seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness And all these things All these things All these blessings All these miracles All these wonders All these signs They shall follow you They shall even overtake you To that extent in the name of Jesus Therefore if you are a disciple of Christ, you don't look around, you don't look down, you don't look sideways, but you look up to Jesus. You look up to God. He is the author and the finisher of our lives. He is the one who knows us, even if we go through some rough patches. That is why in the book of Isaiah chapter 43, verse 2 to 3 says, even though you go through waters, even though you are passing through, you know, you are going through yeah. fires, you are going through, you are not going into. You are going through. I will be with you. Fear not, I will hold you with my right hand. But we tend to fear. How many people have lost things because of impatience? Therefore, if you are a follower of Christ like Tabitha, people will cry for you. And any concordance will show how frequent is used in the Bible. Listen here. A disciple is a learner. Is a life long. It's a it's a long life learner. Hello, you are a long life learner. You must learn. If you are a disciple, you are a student of Jesus Christ. You must be taught day in day out revelations, whatever. You must always be taught. So you are not above. I am still a disciple. I am still learning a lot from him. In the name of Jesus. A disciple is sitting on the feet of Jesus. A disciple is sitting, is carrying a pen and a paper, is opening his ears for the person to hear and to listen to Jesus when he is teaching. Listen. If you are a disciple, you are a learner. Don't stop learning. Don't stop learning. Continue to read the word in the name of Jesus. When you read the book of Luke chapter 10, verse 38 to 42, there were two women there. The other one was called Martha. The other one was called Mary. 
Martha was so busy preparing washing dishes, preparing for Jesus. But Mary was sitting on Jesus' feet. But Martha took an offense to say, can't you see that I am busy? But Jesus said, no, 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 no. No, 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 don't disturb Mary. She was benefiting from her teachings. Therefore, sometimes our business, for us to be busy and fail to listen to what Jesus is saying, sometimes we need time. As disciples, we need to hear from him so that he can speak to into our lives in the name of Jesus. You know, today there are many Christians who are not in the truth, practical of the word Christian. To be a real disciple, to be a real Christian, you need to accept Lord's authority in the name of Jesus. You need to accept his lordship. You need to accept his discipline. You need to accept his will. Amen. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1, if you obey, if you listen, then these blessings shall come upon you, shall pursue you, shall even overtake you, because you are a disciple of God. You must be a believer. You must believe in Jesus Christ. You must believe in God in the name of Jesus. For wonder signs and miracles to happen in your life, you must be a, a believer. A believer is a disciple. A believer is a learner. A believer, I can say in this nowadays, is a Christian. Because if you believe, miracle signs and wonders shall happen to you. Therefore, I am asking you, are you a disciple? Are you a believer? If no, you must be a believer. Because believers are experiencing wonders, signs and miracles without going to these false prophets for miracles. Hello? Others went to Pluton I said, no, that place now is a COVID center. It has changed. Therefore, we need to be believers. If you are a believer, that is why Jesus Christ said in the book of Mark chapter 5, when he met Jairus, Jairus took him and said, let us go into my house. Let us go into my house. My child is at a point of death. Or my child is dead. Come and lay hands unto her so that she may be resurrected. But people came and disturbed Jairus. They said, no, stop troubling Jesus. Stop troubling Jesus. Your child is dead. But Jesus said to Jairus, Jairus, just believe. Just do what? Just believe. When you believe, you ignore people. When you believe, you don't entertain what people are saying. When you believe, you don't take people's stories. When you believe, you don't, you know, listen to anything because you believe in Jesus. You believe in his scriptures. What does the scripture say? What are the promises of God are saying? If he says, I've got good plans, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, that is very good. Those are the plans of God in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Therefore, be a believer. Be a believer. Just trust in him. I am a believer. If I was not a believer, out of what I am going through, I am going rough patches. I am also going through hell. I am going through tests. But I know that I will be carrying my testimony to say, Lord, I come far from I can see where I come from. And if you were not with me, I was not going to be where I am. You can just imagine. Just make it, just play, play your tape back and see where you come from. It, you know, we are existing today. It is not because of our intelligence. There was somebody behind the scenes who was, you know, rescuing us. We went through rough patches. Hello? We survived the test of times. Because we are the believers. 
Mauti singene lapu. Ego nga punyo akona. But sapuma. Sapuma lape nga punyo akona. What a sapuma. Oh, nkulu nkulu ganyo na yeti. We need to, to thank God. It's not a show of. You know, sometimes we need to, to exalt him, to praise him, to thank him for what he is doing into our lives. He is working in darkness. He is working, you know, in secret place. He is doing wonders in the name of Jesus. Therefore, we need to be believers. Even if sickness can attack you, even if death can arrive at your family in your house or can attack you, but believe you me or not, God is about to do something. God is about to do something in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. If you are a disciple, doesn't matter what you are going through, you shall be victorious. You shall overcome. You shall overcome. Everything is under your feet. You have been given authority to trample over the scorpions, to trample over serpents in the name of Jesus. You've got that power. You've got that dominion. You shall make it because you are a believer. I am not worried about what I am going through. I know that I am already victorious. I have victory over every enemy. You are victorious. Tabitha got sick and died. But they had to look for Peter to say she does not qualify to die. You must pray for her until she is resurrected. Because of the role that she is playing. In the name of Jesus. Therefore my million dollar question is are you a believer? Are you a disciple? Don't stagger when it comes to faith. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Have faith in God. God shall deliver you from all the troubles that you will be experiencing in the name of Jesus. God is your deliverer. It doesn't matter what you are going through. As a believer, I celebrate what I am going through. As a believer, I celebrate. I want to see the power of his resurrection. I want to see the power of his restoration. I want to see the power of his establishment. I want to see the power of his comfort. I want to see the power of his settlement. Because he's working wonders. When the storms come, when the storms come as a believer, it will deliver, it will be, it, it, it will, that's when we will start to see whether you are a believer or not. Do you understand? When, listen here, when the storms start to attack your house, your house must stand still because you are a believer. When storms are starting to attack you, you must not be shaken. But you shall be shaken if you are not a believer. I'm not talking about a, a, a lip service Christian, a lip service brethren, a lip service sister or brother in the church, but I'm talking about a believer, a staunch believer. That when storms come, your house shall not be eroded. Even storms come, you shall remain strong. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. It is my prayer that we believe. We are believers in Christ Jesus. It doesn't matter what. As long as you are in this world, we shall experience storms. From A until Z. But we shall survive. Greater is he that is in us than the one who is in this world in the name of Jesus. Therefore, let us not lose faith. Let us continue to trust in him in every situation of our lives in the name of Jesus. Be a believer. Trust in him in times of trouble in the name of Jesus. Blessed is the man who put his trust on God. But cursed is the man who put his trust on another man in the name of Jesus. Therefore, 
Listen here. Tabitha was a believer. Tabitha was a Christian. Tabitha was everything. Tabitha made offerings and sacrifices. But she was not exempted from challenges. Why are you crying when you go through storms in life? You will cry all night. I was asking God, Lord, why do you allow this situation to happen? I am a tither. I am a giver. Eh? I do everything for the church. I do everything for the pastor. But why do I qualify for these rough patches? No, God is at work. Don't question him. God is testing you. God wants to promote you. God wants to give you, you know, another level. Where we are going through at work, where we are going through rough patches and church, you know, all the situations that we find us, ourselves in, these challenges are bringing promotion. These challenges are bringing transformation into our lives. Our lives will never be the same again. These things, listen here. Listen to me. Sometimes you may experience these things only to find that God wants to give you another promotion. So that when you are in that position, you must not ill-treat people. You must have a first-hand experience of pain, of ill-treatment, and say, you know what? I know this, and I am not going to do to people when I am in that position in the name of Jesus. Matthew 16, not Matthew, but John chapter 16, verse 33 says, In this world you shall experience troubles. I was asking a question to say to you. Why did Tabitha experience death? Why Tabitha experienced death, but she was a staunch believer? Take note as a brethren, as a Christian, as a disciple, you are not immune from problems. I am not immune from problems. The problems that I'm going through, you cannot even stomach them. When you can faint, when you can collapse. Me! I stomach things that cannot be stomached. But they will even ask themselves, even those that are attacking me, where do I get courage? Where do I get strength? It is because I am built on the rock of ages. I am built on Jesus. Because none of the problems that are happening in this world that are not recorded in the Bible. I, I encourage you, read the Bible. When you read about David, see yourself in as David and see the challenges David went through. When you read about Tabitha, see yourself as Tabitha. She experienced death. David experienced some attacks and all these things. All the problems that are recorded in the Bible are taking place even today. Therefore, whenever you are experiencing challenges in your life, just consult your Bible, read and pray. Yeah and say, Father, thank you. There are people who are going through gossip. Gossip is equivalent to death. Do you understand? Yes. Tobias, San Palat, they planned all these nonsensical things against Nehemiah. But he never lost faith. He continued to work. He continued to, to do wonder signs and miracles. He continued to, to do the assignment of God. I am also going through attacks, but I am making good use of the word of God. I am touching people's lives in the name of Jesus. Therefore, don't expect to live, you know, an exclusive life. To live a, a life that is far from problems. The more you are a believer, the more you'll experience challenges, either maritally, work-wise, ministry-wise, community-wise, all areas, even health-wise, you shall experience that. But the Bible says, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. You must put on the full armor of God so that you can be able to stand against the tricks of the devil. Because some of these things are there to discourage you. Some of these things are there to ensure that you pull out and you say, you know what? I am done. I am done to be a Christian. I am done. 
I would rather go back to become a sangoma. I would rather go back to become a drunkard. I would rather go back to become a slut. I would rather go back to become, you know, a womanizer or a menizer, whatever. I would rather go back and live my ordinary life that I... No! For whatever, back what's never. You are not immune from problems. Listen here, in the book of Mark chapter 4, verse 36 to 50, 35 to 42, the disciples were with Jesus in the boat. The storms attacked the boat that where Jesus was. As long as you have Jesus, you must experience attacks. As long as you have Jesus, you must go through rough patches. He is taking us through. We are going through. We are going through test. After the test, we sh that test shall become a testimony. That test shall become a testimony. The storms attacked the boat. The disciples went tirelessly trying to take out water, but the boat was about to sink until they woke up Jesus. They said, Jesus, can't you see that we are perishing? Can't you see that we are dying? Then Jesus arose and rebuked the storms. We've got Jesus who can rebuke the storms of life. Listen here. If you do not have Jesus and you are starting to experience problems, where would you cry for help? Where would you cry for help? Dorcas, as a disciple, died. And the brethren had to cry for help to the prophet of God. They had to look for the prophet of God to say she must be resurrected. It was a demand to the prophet. They said, you don't pray for us to be comforted. You don't pray for us to understand the times and the seasons of life. But we are asking you to pray that he must, she must be resurrected. Because of her good works. Notice that Dorcas devoted her life to do good works. Are you devoted? To, how, how, how are you devoting your life? How are you devoting your life? I devote my life in, going to, in, doing, in doing good works. Hello? I experienced a, a very serious challenge. When I experienced that, it was a benefit for me to do the work of the Lord. I said, I can use this time whilst my enemies are busy fighting for fighting me. Me, I will be doing the work of the Lord. I don't mind my business. I am minding God's business. Then God, in his own time, in his own season, he is going to take care of my situation. I cannot save myself, yeah. but he is the one who will deliver me from all the troubles. As they have come together against my life, as they have come together against your life, don't focus on the enemy's plans, but focus on God's plans. Talk has devoted her life in doing good things. Where do you devote your time? What is it that you are doing for life? Huh? Dorcas. She was always doing good and helping the poor. That's what she was doing. I am always preaching the word. At times every day. I've got quality time. The enemy has given me time. To do the work of the Lord. I said thank you to my enemies. Who gave me quality time. To do the work of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. When bad things happen in your life. Turn those bad things into good opportunities. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? So that you can be able to do the work of the Lord. The Bible says in verse 36, Tabitha was always doing good and helping the poor. 
She was a doer, not just a talker. How many of us are doers of the word? Not the talkers of the word. We are the talkers. We are the talkers, not the doers of the word. Let us do what the Bible tells us to do. Then you can see. That's why we shall live long. Me, I don't qualify to die. I must live to declare the works of the Lord. Yes, I've got testimony to tell. Prophet of God, I don't qualify to die. You don't qualify to die. Yes. You are a testimony. I'm carrying my testimony here. My grandson, my testimony. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Ooh, those apples, five, 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 three, five, no Jesus. Well, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yes, in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, in the verse 39, we are told about the particular ministry she was busy doing. What type of ministry are you doing? What type of ministry are you doing? She was a fashion designer. She was a giver. She was lending to, she was giving to the poor. You know, we must find something that we can do in the communities. We need to find something that we can use that we can do to touch people's lives. It's not about Jesus safe, but what is it that you are doing? What is it that you are doing? You must also ensure that you are doing something in the name of Jesus. She was using a needle. A needle is a very small thing, and the ability to use it is very common today. But here is a ministry that is most acceptable to the Lord, that has brought much comfort and relief to his children. Take note that Dorcas was a lady who was full of good works. Let us be of, let us be full of good works Amen. as we learn. Let us be full of good works. Listen here. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 to 9. By grace have ye been saved through faith and that not yourselves. By grace, when you do good things, it is not the good things that will deliver you, but it is the grace of God. Yes, we need not to glorify over our lives, but it is what the grace of God that shall deliver us. Titus chapter 3 verse 5, not by works done in the righteousness, which we did ourselves according to his mercy. He saved us according to his mercy, according to his grace. He saved us. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God afore prepared that we should walk in them. Salvation is given unto us besides the issues of work. By doing good things, we are also provoking God for our restoration. Amen. Therefore, we need to be saved. We need to trust Jesus. What is it that you are doing in the church? What is it that you are doing in the ministry that you are called? Amen. That is why I don't want MCs here. In this ministry because once you become an MC you see yourself now as a pastor you start to go and start a church that is premature you'll be celebrated I remember I went into another church where I was invited to go and minister the MC was this rolling verses entertaining people I said ah. I told Brother Stair, I said, you see, that is why I don't want you to become MCC. Because now you tend to take my time. The person took two hours as an MC. Then I had to preach only for 15 minutes. It was very unfair. When I took my one hour, 30 minutes, they said, I must mind time. I said, you tell your MC. Or else, let us cut off the deal. I'm no longer coming to a church. I need my time in the name of Jesus Therefore, what I'm trying to say, be a disciple, do the good work, find a space in the church, find the space in the community, try to make an impact. Wherever you are, try to make an impact. You know, when I was idling, God said to me, you know, this is time for you to preach. I preached 
Hey, almost every day. For three months. Every day for three months. Hey, said minister to my people, we've got quality time. What is it that you are doing? I don't want you to wonder. I don't want you to struggle. I don't want you to think that cool. No, 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 you must never. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Therefore, it is important for us to find our ministries. Number four, you need to notice variety ministries in operation in the, in the work of the church. Identify those ministries. Others are thinking of apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher of the word. They just focus on those fivefold ministries and think that we are all called to be pastors or to be prophets or to be evangelists. No, it's not. When Dorcas died, we read that some of the women folk ministered by washing. It was the ministry that they, these women did. They washed her body. That was, that was the duty that they got. Others, they sent a message to say, go and look for Peter. Do you understand? And Peter also came and ministered through prayer, communicating with God. You don't come to church and fold arms. See where are the gaps. If the deco is not okay, if the church is not clean, let it be clean. Do you understand? Find a space where you can do things. Don't just idle. Because an idle mind is a devil's workshop. You'll always be critic. You'll say today, I didn't understand the pastor. You know, the pastor is so... is cold today. I've seen that, you know, he's going through some rough patches. All we can do things, we can do things, we can do things, we can do things, we can do things. There are a number of ministries that we can do. Others in the church are cleaners, others are cleaning toilets, others are ushers, others are doing all this. But you just try to find where your calling is. Can I tell you where is your calling? Anything that annoys you in the church. That is your calling for you to correct it and to do exactly Amen. exactly what needs to be done. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Stop complaining. Stop gossiping. I am not perfect. But you find a space and if you say that, ah, ah. we need to do something. Take an action. My duty is to preach the weight. Your duty is to also to do what? To preach the weight and to see other areas of your concern. That's why I will never ever push people. It must be a revelation. Do you understand? There are a number of gifts in the Bible that you can do. Giving. Others are tithers. Others are doing alms. Others are doing offerings. Others are doing all these type of things. Others are devoting their time for prayer. Did you know that to be an intercessor, it is a gift from God? You must be a gift in the ministry, in the work of the Lord. You must be a gift and you must give that which God has given you. Amen. There are a number of gifts that one can mention one day. This is just another topic for another day in the name of Jesus. When we talk of the gifts in the Bible... Oh my God, there are so many spiritual gifts. There are so many gifts. There are so many gifts. But I don't want to go to, towards that. I am here in this book of Acts chapter 9, verse 36 to 34. Peter prayed. Peter prayed for Tabitha. Then Peter prayed the prayer of faith. And Dorcas was raised from the dead. Peter did what? Prayed a prayer of faith. James chapter 5, verse 13 to 17, not 17, 13 to 16. It speaks if is any is anyone amongst you sick? Let him call the prophets. They will pray for him. And the prayer of faith will bring restoration. 
If you are happy, you must give praises unto God. Peter's approach provides us with a lesson on how to, to seek restoration of dead souls, of those that are dead into transgressions. Hello? Did you know that we are, some of us are dead in sins? We are dead in sins. See, feel the ezonuin. The sins have just entangled us. We can't pull out. There are a number of things that are taking place. Coming to church, blood washed, speaking in tongues. But you are soaked in gossip. You are soaked in hatred. You are soaked in manipulation. Blood-washed people. I've experienced that. A person, a leader of a church, a person that you can trust, but prove to me that she is also human. She is just a lip service person. I'm not bringing a judgment. The person robbed me. Robbed me. A blood washed is robbing another blood wash. Then I said, Lord, I surrender all unto you. I don't want even to answer this person because if I can go back to who Spew and Gabinde was, this person is dead. Hello? So it's a matter of praying. Therefore, we need to look up to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. And you did. He make a life when we were dead through trespasses of our sins. He made us alive. We needed to pray for our saints. We needed to pray for our brethren. We are going through, you know, dead situations. She says, we are in trespasses. That is why the prayer says, lead us not into temptations, but deliver us from temptations. In the name of Jesus. Peter sent them out. All of them. He sent them out. Because he knew that it's only God who could restore dockers. Peter must be alone with God. But today, when we perform our miracles, we want the video to come and take. We want people to come and see what we are doing. We are advertising ourselves. We are using this deliverance to attract more people to your confusion. Peter said, I don't want your cameras. Go out. I want, it's me and God here. And this issue of death that is in front of us. Peter chased them out. Peter got unto his knees and prayed. When he went down on his knees, he was showing reverence. He was showing sincerity. He was showing earnestness. This was the prayer of faith. Because you are showing what? Commitment. As he knelt down, Peter had to speak, started to speak. And he said, Tabitha, arise. Tabitha, wake up. This reminds me of Jairus. When he came with Jesus in his house, Jesus Christ chased them out, all of them. He said, you go out. I want my three disciples I want the father, Jairus, as well as the mother of this daughter, to be in the house. Amen. Jesus knelt down and started to thank God. And he said, Talita kum, little girl, wake up. Therefore, some of the miracles cannot be performed in the crowd. But today's prophets are performing miracles in the crowd. I don't know which God are they serving. In the name of Jesus. Peter spoke to 
Dockers, I want us today to speak into our lives. I want us today to speak. If you seek restoration of souls, we must testify. Job chapter 22, verse 28, the Bible says, You shall decree a thing and it shall be established. What comes out of your mouth cannot come back void in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. That is why the book of Psalms 107 verse 2 says, Let the redeemed of Jehovah say so, whom he had redeemed from the hand of the adversary. We need you to speak. Are you speaking to your death situation? Hello? Did you know that you, your mouth is carrying deliverance? Did you know that you are the one to deliver yourself from every challenge? If you come here for prophecies, you are in the wrong place. You are a prophet. God has anointed your lips. You must speak wisdom. You must speak power. You must speak authority. You are in charge of this world. Jesus Christ died on this earth. Died. When he died, we got our power back. When he died, we got every blessing that we was that was stolen in the name of Jesus. Hello, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You raise up your hand. Say, Father, today, Father, today I, am speaking life I am speaking life to my dead situation. I say, Talita Kum, little girl, rise up, wake up, Dokas, rise up, stand up in the name of Jesus. In every situation where I find myself, I am speaking resurrection. I am speaking. To my organs, to my organs. I, am I am speaking to the entire body. To the entire I, am body. I am speaking to my, speaking work, to my to work, to my ministry, to my, ministry, to my, family. To my family. In every area, every area of my life, of my life. I, say, I say, arise, arise. Stand, up, stand up, be resurrected. In the name of Jesus, name of my Jesus. Father, my today, today I, decree I decree and I declare and I my restoration. My my resurrection. my resurrection, power of power resurrection, power of resurrection. Locate me, locate me, locate me. Resurrect my dead situation. Resurrect my mind. Resurrect my body. Resurrect my soul. Resurrect my emotions. Resurrect my will. Resurrect my mind. In the name of Jesus. Pray, pray, In the name of Jesus. I'm speaking resurrection in your death situation. Raise up your hands. Can you please speak to your situation that is dead? Marital situation, yes, yes, ministry, health, family. Kona makaya feelings about the labas and genera bas pumel at work. People they do the way they wish you correct them, they don't want. Eh? Speak life. I want you to speak life to that situation. In your in our communities, our children are full on drugs. Hello? Our country is confused. Eh? There are a number of things that are happening play, are taking place. Eh? We are experiencing torments, ill treatment, whatever that you may call. Eh? People are dying. Eh? People are killed. People are hijacked. Eh? People's property is being stolen. People are full of corruption. Even in high places. Let us pray for that situation in the name of Jesus. Praise. You, you see now Peter also helped Dorcas and showed sympathy. When you help someone, you are showing sympathy. 
by coming and visiting you, we are shown sympathy. Touching your hand. God is shown sympathy. Isaiah 41, 10. I will hold you with my right hand. I will help you. Peter stretched his hand. Stressed his hand. And he helped Tabitha to arise. How many people have you helped? Or are you selfish? Hello? There are people who are so selfish. We can do both of us same business, but I will think of sabotaging you. I will think of what? Sabotaging you. I will become jealous of you. When you've got something, you'll even say, why don't you give me this business so that I can run? I can see that, you know, you don't have a capacity. Why don't you teach me? Where is your hand? You must lend a hand to somebody. Help someone to help another person. Don't be selfish. People today are so selfish. They think of themselves. They will even kill your business. They will even kill your ministry. They will even make it a point that you close your church so that they can post in big numbers. It's not about numbers. Numbers to me is a quantity. But disciples to me is a quality. Even if I can preach to two people, to me it is full. Because I know the impact that will be done. Peter showed sympathy. How needful this is if we will mature. Nature, the new covenant. Are we preaching the gospel to the poor? Are we helping the needy? I'm not talking about this show that is shown on TV. Once they say we give to the poor. You even display that which you are giving. We give groceries. Are you doing that every day? The grocery that you gave in December, is it still there? It's like the, the flour and the oil that the, the Zarephath woman was having. I'm asking you. Yeah. Elijah the Tishbite lended a hand to the Zarephath woman. She spoke the word. She said, the flour and the oil that you said, it is the last meal, shall not come to an end. Amen. We are giving groceries that are coming to an end. We haven't yet reached that level. It is our duty to pray that we need to lend a hand to give people something that is lifelong. Are we giving people that is lifelong? The word that I can give you. The food that I can give you. This is the food that I can give you. Amen. This is lifelong what? Food. This is lifelong what? Food. That you can eat day in, day out. Are you reaching people's lives? Are you preaching a gospel to them? Are you helping them? Give someone something that will last long. Not something that tomorrow it is over. Then when you come, people are just following a grocery to you, not the weed. Because they've seen that you are a giver. There is nothing wrong with that. But try to find the food that you can give it to people. Food that will last long. Peter helped and showed sympathy. Peter presented Dorcas alive. Verse 41. What a joy for Peter, for Dorcas, and for the saints of Joppa. What a joy for us when God blesses our ministry. What a joy in heaven over dead souls raised to life. What a joy. What a joy. We shall celebrate the heavens shall celebrate. Yeah. You read Luke chapter 15, verse 1 to 10. Don't in your spare time. The person rejoiced because 
found that only one sheep left 99. She said, he said, come and celebrate with me. My heart is full of joy. That woman lost a coin. She looked for that coin in the church. We are looking for coins. Then when she found that coin, she celebrated. The women in Joppa, they celebrated. People in Joppa celebrated to say their prayers were answered by God. Tabitha didn't qualify to die. How many people are going to cry for me and you? How many? What impact are you doing in your community? What impact are you doing in your work? What impact are you doing in your family? What impact are you doing to yourself? Nothing. So must we cry for you? No, I won't. For what good reason? Accept Jesus as the Lord and Savior. Your life will never be the same again. For you to be resurrected, you must accept Jesus. Nothing less, nothing more. Nothing less, nothing more. Nothing less, nothing more. We need to accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. When the prodigal son was found, when the prodigal son made a decision to come back home, the father invited everyone to say, come and celebrate with me. He was lost, now he is found. Raise up your hands. And say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I was lost. I was lost. Now I am found. Now I am found. Fa Father, Father, continue, continue to celebrate. To celebrate. Continue, continue to celebrate. To celebrate. Continue, Continue to celebrate, to celebrate my, resurrection, my resurrection, my restoration, my restoration in, the in the name of Jesus. Listen here. He died so that we may be found. Yeah. Ephesians 2 6 says, He died with us, He was buried with us. Yeah. When He rose from the dead, He rose from the dead with yeah. us. Yes. We are seated with Him in heavenly places. We are seated with him where? In heavenly places. Amen. That is why he is telling us to say, you know how I celebrate you, my children? Sit on my right hand side until I fight for you all these challenges that you are facing. I am the one to fight for you. Yours is just to rule in the midst of your enemies. We are being celebrated because we are seated with him in heavenly places. Me, I am seated with him in heavenly places. Yeah. There is no weapon that is fashioned against yes. me or you that shall prosper. Because we are on his protection. Yeah. He is delivering us. Yes. He is reversing every evil arrows yeah. of sickness and diseases. Yeah. I shall not worship the devil. Yeah. I shall never ever in the name of Jesus bow down to the name, to the name of the devil. We must be celebrated. I want us to celebrate. Just clap your hands and start to celebrate God and say, Lord, thank you for your resurrection. Thank you that you resurrected me. Thank you, Lord, that I am resurrected. I am celebrated. I am celebrated. I am celebrated. I am celebrated. Like. In the name of Jesus. All that happened in Joppa became a glory of God. It became what? The glory of God. So your deliverance will become a glory of God because people will see God in you. Yeah. Me, I cannot waste my time serving God for no apparent reason. I qualify for my existence. I qualify for my healing. I qualify for wealth and riches. I cannot just serve God for, 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 for nothing. No. There must be a benefit in the name of Jesus. Dorcas was ill. Dorcas died. Dorcas was raised from dead. 
You are ill. There are ill situations that you are facing. You are dead whilst you are moving. God is in those guys. In your health, M7 Zini, people, others are celebrating, but there are people who are going to cry. To say you don't qualify to die, but you qualify to live to declare the works of the Lord. Amen. God is going to turn things around. Say, th say power must change hands. Power must change things must turn around. Say things must turn around. Things must turn around. In the name of Jesus. Raise up your hands. There are lessons that you must learn. Say, I'm a disciple of Christ. I am a disciple of Christ. Like a Tabitha. Like Tabitha. I am a good man. 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 In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Like a Tabitha. Like Tabitha. Who was a good woman? Who was a good woman? I am a good woman. I am a good man. I am a good man. To the poor, to the, poor, to the, community, to the community, to the saints, to the saints in, the in the name of Jesus. My Father, my Father, my Father I, am I am praying that you remove, that you remove every, evil every evil in the name of Jesus. Name of no, Jesus. Evil no evil was found, was found with, her. with her. My Father, my Father touch me, me, wash me with your blood. With your blood. My, Father, my Father, I must not I must be associated, be associated with, wickedness. with wickedness. I must not, I must be, not associated be associated with wicked, with wicked people. people. My, father today, my Father today, I declare, I declare, and, I declare and I declare that the characteristics, that the characteristics of, Tabitha of Tabitha must be my characteristics, be my characteristics in, the in the name of Jesus. She was not associated with any wickedness. Amen. You want your breakthrough but you are associated with wickedness. We are telling you one, two, three, you don't want to carry out to lawful instruction. Hello? Amen. Do this, you don't want to do, you want to do that which you want. Then you expect the miracle of God to take place. No, it cannot. Yeah. If you obey, if you diligently obey the word of the Lord, Amen. your enemies shall be God's enemies. But if you do not, the enemies shall pursue you with their cases. They will even overtake you. She was consumed with love. Amen. Are you consumed with love? Are you loved by the saints? Or when you appear, they say, oh, I want us to stand up and pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Say, my father, my life, my father, my life must, be full of must be full of testimonies that will win Christ. That will win Christ. That will win Christ. That will Christ. To the poor, to the poor, poorest people. Poorest people. My, father, my father, let my life, let my life be, a be a living testimony to attract, to attract sinners, sinners to change their lives. Change their my, lives. Father, my, my father, father, my father, I declare, I, I, declare, I declare that I shall not die, that I shall not prematurely. die prematurely. I shall not die, shall not die. Prematurely. prematurely. No power, no power can, force can force me to me die. To die. In the name of the Jesus, name of my, Jesus. Father, my Father, I carry the power. I carry the, I carry the power. I carry the, I carry the dominion. The in the name of Jesus, the name of I carry the authority. Carry the authority. In, the in the name of Jesus, my Father, my Father, my Father let the heavens heaven reject, reject my, soul my soul and send me back send me on, back earth, on earth, earth because of the unfinished of the assignment, assignment that I need to do. Need in the name of Jesus, my Father. Reverse my death. 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 My Father, connect me to the true prophet of God. Connect me to the true prophet of God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. My Father, let people cry for me. My Father, correct everything. That I, that I am doing in the name of Jesus. Name of Let Jesus. us pray. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you in this time and hour. We thank you, Lord, that you resurrected Dorcas from the dead. Resurrect us, Father God. Father, we are arising from your bed. All those that are sleeping on their beds, let them rise up now. Let them start to walk. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Yes, 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 yes. Arise! 
Rise up, rise up, rise up, rise up. From every dead situation. We are silencing every dead situation. Yes, that job is yours. That promotion is yours. Yes, any delay, any delay, any delay, any, the earth that has buried you must, the earth that has buried you, the earth that has buried you must vomit you in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much in the name of Jesus. This is Apostle Spirit of Wisdom Kabinde, all the way from South Africa and Pretoria. Thank you so much for watching in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Thank you so much in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.